As always, it depends on the company. Um, there are uh, a lot of brands, a lot of companies that uh, prior to this uh, pandemic, they, they were in really good situation, had um, been investing in, in digitalizing their uh, companies for a long time, and those are going to be in a great position now. Those who were not, who did not do their, their homework before, uh, they're going to have to start investing heavily both in digitalization and on channel. So, are companies prepared? Not all of them, unfortunately, but um, indeed these, um, this pandemic has challenged us all and, um, and it has basically um, pushed all of us to be more digital and has pushed us all into omnichannel. Sure, uh, but not, not since uh, a year ago. We've been working on digitalizing our, our, not just our procedures and the way that we work, but also digitalizing our assets and, um, and basically everything that we do for our clients. We've been working on this for at least five, six years now. We uh, created the Retail Intelligence Department um, three years ago. Which one of uh, its main goals was to um, help um, shopping centers particularly and retailers to in some cases um, digitalize um, their assets and and fully dive into an omnichannel experience uh, for um, for the for their customers and visitors. Two years ago we began this journey um, of uh, looking at the special leasing in-house and, and finding out how how were we um, doing this specialist not just in Spain but also in other parts of Europe uh, because we, we knew for a fact that we wanted to be more efficient uh, and there was still room for improvement in the way we did things. Um, so we began uh, speaking with other countries, with Italy, UK, uh, Netherlands, uh, CE, uh, finding out how were our colleagues doing things and if they were using any, any software and, and if so, what, is it, what was it they were doing. Um, and with that, we drafted uh, some guidelines on what the new uh, special leasing procedure should be uh, and how to standardize that across EMEA. Um, with that information, we drafted um, a, a document just basically saying what would be the ideal tool that we needed and we used that. Uh, we sent it out uh, in a pitch to different companies in the market. We looked at different options, building it ourselves. Uh, what other uh, companies were out there doing these, and so on, uh, and and we were lucky enough to to find Booker Corner uh, in a way uh, they were perfect match uh, for what we were doing. Uh, they basically filled every single or ticked every single box in in our wish list, um, and that's the reason why we are uh, right now working with them. It was it was a fairly straightforward and a very simple decision. So data is king, and it should be the center of every single decision made uh, on every single company. Uh, and those companies who are not data driven, um, they, they basically have two options. Either uh, change the way they do things and start collecting data and, and making it useful, um, uh, making a better use of the data, or they will probably uh, be left behind and, and in the end uh, disappear because everyone else is, is making wiser decisions based on, on not just market data, but also the data that they themselves produce. So are we in a real omnichannel environment? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> um, I think every, every single one of us is, is making efforts uh, towards being truly omnichannel, but uh, we are far from that. Um, basically because being, being able to really connect every single channel where we are and being able to recognize er, um, each customer, each individual customer uh, on every single channel is, is a real challenge. It's, it's really, really hard. So um, to me, being fully on the channel um, is, it has to be the goal of course, but we have to be we need to be aware that this goal is going to be feasible in the next few years, uh, but at least we need to start working towards that. And whichever channels we are able to connect, and uh, the more information we can start gathering from our consumers for their own benefit, um, 
we, we definitely need to start working on that and we have been working on that for uh, four or five years now and slowly but surely we are connecting more and more channels in, in our shopping centers towards that fully omnichannel shopping center. It's not just this one thing, uh, it's, it's just a, a broad range of activities and a broad range of, of services and, uh, and, and tools that we're using for that. Um, so the first thing is, of course, you know, what does the customer want? And the problem with that is that um, because we uh, have such a wide range of customer types, uh, not everyone wants the same. So we need to be able to cater a little bit for everyone. If possible, so that would be the first thing. Uh, in terms of only towel, um, we are trying to um, produce the best detailed customer experience uh, that we can for for a shopping centers consumers, not just on the website, but also uh, on the social media with the apps we have in the shopping centers, producing little, producing loyalty schemes uh, that pro provide rewards to our customers just for visiting the shopping center or for, shop, for shopping in the shopping center, things like that. Um, and also the whole, the actual uh, physical experience in the shopping center. What does each asset need to have uh, depending on, on the consumer types that, that, that we have or the, the commercial mix that we have. Uh, of course the expectation of the consumer in a shopping center that is basically uh, a supermarket with uh, 10 stores it's going to be completely different from uh, the shopping experience that someone might expect from a 200,000 square meter DLA um, shopping center with 200 stores. So you need to adapt, you need to be aware of that, um, you need to provide um, the right services um, for, the, for your consumers, bearing in mind that the basics need to be always okay. Uh, the basics basically are maintenance, security, cleaning. So you need to have that perfect and then on top of that you need to build your whole uh, customer experience. Uh, social corporate responsibility is key for uh, any company right now. Not just because it's, it's fashionable, and that's something I hate to say, but it is fashionable, but it's also because it's really important for our customers. Um, we recently run a, um, uh, a satisfaction survey in, in amongst uh, 9,000 customers in 20 shopping centers and we asked them um, how important it is for you that um, companies have um, a, an SCR um, program or are sustainable. 70% um, of uh, all the, all the uh, customers said that it was very important or important. So, I mean, it's not just uh, something that you have to do because that's the trend. Um, it's something that customers really appreciate. Uh, and from a moral and ethical point of view, it's, it's something that it's, it's really, really, really must. We are putting a lot of effort in, in trying to, uh, again, gather data uh, about what's going on on every single one of our assets, not just the shopping centers, but also the other 300 plus uh, assets that we manage, including offices, uh, logistics, and warehouses, and, and everything, um, just to find, our how, uh, f to find out how sustainable we are, uh, and what is our carbon footprint and how can we reduce it or compensate for that. I think that the real challenges that we're facing after, um, um, after the pandemic are, one of them, which is the most obvious, I would say, is um, of course the omnichannel. Um, we were completely closed for a few months uh, in Spain, just three months in Spain, uh, partially closed in, in some parts uh, for, um, uh, for a few months too. Uh, but in other countries, they've been, uh, shopping centers have been closed for months uh, and months. Um, so the problem with that is that in Spain, for instance, the uh, penetration of e-commerce was uh, just uh, 4%. During the pandemic, it went up to 16, 17%. But, but I mean, it makes sense because there was there were no other way in which you could have bought uh, in, in some cases. One of the things that we realized is that um, in, in a survey that we run uh, in shopping centers, um, in 2018, we asked a question, um, would you ever buy uh, online? 
and roughly around 15% of customers say they would never even consider buying online. That went down to 6% this year. So the challenge for us right now is how can we make both worlds uh, live uh, and coexist at the same time. And we know that uh, it's not either or. It's not either online or offline. Uh, and there is a huge mix in, in the shopping process. People uh, visit the shops um, online and then they buy offline or they research um, for a product online before actually buying in a store. Um, so one of the real challenges is are we, gonna, are we ever going to be able to attribute the cost uh, or the sales, sorry, for uh, one uh, product that has been shopped online or offline, where was the actual sale produced? So I would say that is one of the biggest uh, challenges, uh, but there are others, um, including the consumer's um, habits have changed a lot, and we need to see um, how long it's going to take us to recover that. One of the things that we have seen is that um, customers are now um, coming maybe less often to shopping centers, but spending more time. Uh, they, tend to, um, they tend to visit shopping centers that are closer to where they live. So there are a lot of changes that we are uh, monitoring and, and we need to keep monitoring to see the evolution of that and be able to adapt our services and our communication and, uh, and, and basically how we serve uh, the shoppers uh, coming to the shopping center to be able to engage with them better um, and get them to visit us as much as they can and spend as much as possible.